Hiya, book two. Bill Rudenberg here at the Rudenberg Library. Uh, had a great weekend. Uh, went out and, and celebrated my mother-in-law's birthday. And while we were in town, we uh, decided, or at least I decided, to go book shopping. Uh, I've been, uh, so this could be a book haul. Uh, it's a smaller, it's a, well, I guess a medium-sized one, but uh, it's good, uh, I thought it was a pretty good book haul. Um, I've been watching YouTube videos. I know Peg had a couple pretty good book hauls. Uh, Steve, over at uh, his channel, he had like three really good-sized book hauls, and, and I am so uh, glad that his bookshop is open again because I really enjoy listening to him talk about the books that he picks up and how they how they uh, you know meld into his collection and his rhyme and reason for keeping those and so anyway I always enjoy book hauls and I know there's several of you out there that have had had uh, uh, book hauls so I wanted to add in and give you one of my own so uh, here we go and this is pretty much all Civil War stuff I got this from from the Jesse James outlet mall in St. Joe while we were there and Spent a total of just over seventeen dollars, and thought I did fairly good for, uh, for the the books that I picked up. So here we go. First book is uh, one of Jackson's Foot Cavalry. It's from the Eyewitness to the Civil War uh, paperback series uh, from by John H. Warsham. And um, you guys that have followed the channel know that I am going to be reading a. Stonewall Jackson biography here soon, so I thought this would go really well with that. I was pretty excited. It was only a dollar and a half. Um, this is from Bantam Books out of New York, and it is a, let's see here, 1992 printing. And this is what it says on the back. It says, in this unique series, the Civil War comes vividly to life. Here... Uh, here are eyewitness accounts, many available for the first time in decades by generals, journalists, and ordinary foot soldiers, both blue and gray, that relive the conflict in all its terrible glory. Each volume brings you a human perspective on the war, its most decisive battles, its most remarkable personalities. Bantam's eyewitness to the Civil War's American history at its finest, and a reading experience you'll never forget. So, um, it says, uh, this remarkable memoir by an enlisted man under Stonewall Jackson details the life of the common soldier of the Confederacy. Led by their brilliant, eccentric, and inspired commander, the soldiers who served under Jackson were often asked to do the impossible, and as often as not, they rose to the occasion. Here is the story of forced marches at night, pitched battles against long odds, and the stunning unorthodox maneuvers that struck fear into the hearts of Union generals and made Stonewall Jackson a legend. From Fort Sumner to Jackson's Shenandoah Valley campaign to Jubal Early's defeat in 1864, this first-hand account chronicles the hopes and travails of the ordinary rebel soldier from campsite to battlefield like never before. All right, so uh, I think that's going to be a that'll be a good read. I go right along with that biography of Stonewall that uh, I hope to uh, read. So from that same series, that eyewitness to the Civil War, I got uh, Lieutenant Frank A. Haskell uh, of, the, of the Union and Colonel William C. Oates of the Confederacy uh, in their book, or, or their combined writings of Gettysburg. All right, so um, the back of this one, in some, some ways it epitomized the entire war. Three hot days in July filled with missed opportunities, great courage, inconsistent leadership, and horrific, relentless carnage. In this rare volume, we see the battle from both sides as experienced by two very different combatants, one Union and the other Confederate. From Little Round Top to the Devil's Den to Pickett's Charge, Lieutenant Frank A. Haskell and Colonel William C. Oates, one in mat uh, meticulous hindsight and the other still feverish with war, Recreate three days that changed American history. Here are the momentous decisions of Lee, Longstreet, and Meade. Here are the fatal maneuverings of the forces in the field. And here, in descriptions unmatched in Civil War literature, is all the heartbreak and triumph of Gettysburg. Um, so this is, uh, again, from Bantam Books out of New York. And it is a, let's see here, 19, another 1992 book. So it's out of that uh, series. That'll be a really good one to read. I, I show a documentary to my eighth graders every year about Gettysburg. And it's it's a really good, 
you know, recreation of, of the battle. And a lot of it is based on Haskell's writings. They, they refer to him a lot. So when I saw that, I was pretty excited. I thought that'll be really good. It'll go with that documentary I use with my students in class. Again, that was $1.50. All right, so um, the next book that I picked up, I picked it up for two bucks. And this is Revel in Washington, 1860 to 1865, uh, by Margaret Leach. All right. Uh, this is a book that gets talked about in a lot of the sources of, of various accounts of the Civil War. And um, I actually already had a copy. So this copy will be replacing this old beat up. I had to tape it. Look at the spine of this thing. It's... It's pretty, you know, it wouldn't last very many more readings. I mean, with I guess with careful use it could, but um, they actually, and they actually had two copies of this book. They had one that was exactly like this that was in much better shape than this, and then they had this one. I just went with this newer edition uh, because the, the uh, cover on this older one is is a kind of a thick cardboardish thing, and when it dries out, it it splits, as you can see, it splits really easy and breaks real easy. And I thought, man, if I get the same type of cover, the same thing's going to happen. So I chose this newer version. So this is a replacement copy. Again, only two bucks. So this is uh, from Carol and Graf Publishers Incorporated out of New York. And this copy is a 1980, nope, 1991 copy, 1991 copy. And it says, Margaret Leach's Pulitzer Prize winning uh, history paints a wonderfully vivid and lively picture of Washington, D.C. during the Civil War. In addition to the major events and figures, such as Lincoln, Leach uses telling anecdotes and draws upon cameo players such as Louisa May Alcott, Walt Whitman, Andrew Carnegie, and a Confederate lady spy to create a living portrait of a sleepy, unfinished city as it struggles to become the strong capital of a united nation. And so this is, this is going to be a really good read. I'm pretty excited to have that one. Again, only two bucks. So I thought that was a good deal. I uh, found this for, this might have been three bucks. Uh, maybe two, but I think it was three. This is uh, James McPherson. Uh, it's Crossroads of Freedom. Antietam, the battle that changed the course of the Civil War. I was real excited to get this. Um, I'm a big fan of uh, James McPherson. As if you've watched the channel, you you know that. Uh, so this is just another addition to add to my collection. It's from Oxford University Press, 2002, and it says the Battle of Antietam, fought on September 17th, 1862 was the bloodiest single day in American history, with more than 6,000 soldiers killed. Here, James McPherson paints a masterful account of this pivotal battle, the events that led up to it, and its aftermath. McPherson vividly describes a day of savage fighting in locales that become fa forever famous. The Cornfield, the Dunkard Church, the West Woods, and the Bloody Lane. And Antietam was a critical victory for the Union. It restored morale in the North and kept Lincoln's party in control of Congress. It crushed Confederate hopes of British intervention, and it freed Lincoln to deliver the Emancipation Proclamation, which instantly changed the character of the war. McPherson brilliantly weaves these strands of diplomatic and political and military history into a compact, swift-moving narrative that shows why America's bloodiest day is, indeed, a turning point in our history. And so I've, I've loved every book by McPherson that I found. And so when I saw this for only, I think it was three bucks, um, I was pretty excited about that. I thought that was a pretty darn good deal. It's not real long. It's just over, let's see, 156 pages of actual text to read. And then, then the rest of it is the next, uh, what, 50 pages or so, just under 50 pages is notes and stuff like that. But uh, I was pretty excited about that. I thought that was a really good find. Um, this was probably the steal of the day as far as price goes. Uh, this is a biography on Nathan Bedford Forrest, First with the Most, by Robert Self Henry. And uh, I don't know much about him. You read about him in almost every account of the Civil War. He was an excellent cavalry uh, commander. I don't believe he had actual... Uh, like previous military experience. So a lot of the stuff he was doing, he was, you know, learning on his own. And I think that <clears throat> lack of experience 
probably helped him because he could be more creative and not be bogged down with military uh, maneuvers. And so I think that really helped him. But I don't know anything about him. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of him just because uh, of what he stood for and what he did during the war, some of the atrocities that he was the commander of. I was, it's kind of sickening. But militarily, he was, he was really good at what he did um, as far as the military stuff goes. And I don't know anything about him. I've never read anything. This is my first biography on him. But I thought this was the steal of the day. Um, so did I show you that? There's the spine. Uh, this is from Konecki and Konecki. And it's out of New York, 1992. But uh, the reason it was the steal of the day, one of the vendors that's there at the, at the shop, he's got, or he had, uh, he's going out of business actually, or at least he's not going to hold his shop in that antique mall. Uh, but uh, he had a lot of really good history books in there, but they were always like, they're, they're all used and they're extremely high priced. Some of them weren't even in good condition. And, you know, for a used book, when you're asking 15, 20, 30 bucks for a used book, that's... A little bit ridiculous especially when it's not in real good shape but I found this one and uh, he had wanted six which which isn't a bad price but since he's uh, moving out of that antique mall I don't know if he's retired or what I didn't I didn't uh, hear the story behind that but all his books were 75% off so I got this for a dollar fifty I thought and it's hardback so I thought that was a pretty awesome steel deal and I probably would have dug through some more but most of his books were pretty well picked over at that point all right, the next one is David, Her David Herbert Donald's Lincoln. Uh, of course, this won the Pulitzer Prize. It won the Lincoln Prize. Um, really good book. It is Jonathan Cape, publisher, out of London. And it was, let's see, 1995, I think, is when this one was published. And this is the hardback. This is a replacement copy for my paperback that I had on the shelf. And, and the paperback, you know, it, it's not in too bad shape. It's got several reads left in it. But if I can get a hardback, and this was only four bucks, um, if I can get a hardback for four bucks that's in really good shape and fairly clean for the most part, I'm going to take that. And so I'm going to replace this copy. I'll donate this. I actually have a student I think I'm going to give this to and see if uh, she's interested in it. But, um, Pretty excited about that. I'm a big Lincoln fan, as you guys know. And then uh, here's another one dealing with Lincoln. This is Manhunt, the 12 day chase for Lincoln's killer by James L. Swanson. And uh, didn't have a, I believe there is a paper jacket to this, but if you look at the hardcover, it's actually pretty cool. I don't even know that it needs a paper jacket necessarily, but uh, it was missing the paper jacket. Pretty sure it has one. But uh, this is from William Morrow, an imprint of HarperCollins Publishers, out of, uh, let's see, out of New York, 2006, I believe. Yep, yeah, 2006. And so uh, that's my other Lincoln book. I've got a couple other books on the assassination of Lincoln, but this will just kind of go with the collection. I've heard that that's a really good book. So, BookTube, that is my book haul. Um, I've, as I said, I've been thoroughly enjoyed watching your guys' book hauls. I know several of you have been out and about, and you are enjoying the, the freedom that's finally been given back to us to go book hunting. And so uh, keep making those videos because I'm enjoying them. And I uh, hope you enjoyed this. Hope you stayed with me. Until next time, BookTube, have a great day.